So the last thing to take care of for our user routes is our put request, the put request that we make in order to update a user. So first we'll grab our authenticated user using their profile route, or get user profile route. So we'll make a get request to that to get their current data. And we'll try updating a few fields. We'll update their name, email, as well as their avatar. So if we look at that route one, one more time, running check auth, we're going to upload an avatar if they provide one, if our user provides one. We'll resize that avatar to an appropriate size, and then we'll call update user. Now, if they don't have an avatar, we're not going to run these two functions. We're just going to skip to update user. So we'll head to our user controller, and we'll go to upload avatar. And for upload avatar, we need to provide a configuration object. We'll call this avatar upload options. And to set this object, we'll need to bring in the package that we're going to use in order to upload our image. This will be Molter, the package Molter. So first, we need to specify what kind of storage we're using. So storage will be from Molter, the memory storage. So we have the option with Molter to use memory storage or disk storage to store our image. You can set some limits to the size of the image by providing a limits object and setting its file size. We'll give it the number in bytes. And we want this to equal one megabyte, so we can get that by saying 1024 times 1024 times one. If you want to change this to say two megabytes or half a megabyte, you can do this by just multiplying the product of these two numbers of 1024 squared by one. So we'll just write a brief note saying that we're storing image files up to one megabyte. And we're going to have a file filter function, so a property called file filter. And in this function, we'll have a request, the file itself, and next. And what we're doing here is we're going to check the file MIME type. We're going to check the type of the file that this upload avatar function is being given. So we can get the file right here in the second parameter. And we can add a conditional to say if file.mime type, if the type of this file, this type of this image, starts with, and we can use starts with since the mime type will just be a string, if it starts with image slash anything, so if it starts with image, we know we have an image file, then we're going to call next, and in particular we can call next, pass in a first argument of null. This will be for our message. If we wanted to provide a message or some value to the next function in line, which would be resize avatar, but we don't need to do that. And then to move on, we'll pass in the true, we'll pass in true as the second argument here. Otherwise, if we don't have a file mime type that starts with image, I'm going to say next, null, and false to not move on to upload avatar. And in fact, upload avatar won't be set equal to a function that we'll create. We'll actually be equal to Molter. We'll pass in the avatar upload options object. Then we'll execute the single method. And here we need to provide the field name. So this has to match the name of the file input or the name on the request body that we're sending to upload avatar. So we're going to call that avatar. Then for resize avatar, we will create this. So will be async. We'll have request response and next. We'll first check to see that we have an image file. If we have an avatar, we'll say if not request.file. So Molter automatically puts the image on the request, on the file property of request. If we don't have that, we're just going to return next, meaning we can move on to update user. Otherwise, if we do have an, an avatar, we want the extension of it. So we'll get the MIME type again, this time from request.file.mime type. We'll split it on the forward slash. So it'll be image slash something here. I think I forgot to add a ending parentheses right there. We'll split it on the forward slash. And in the array that split creates, we want the second element. So we'll get that with index one in order to create the end of the file that we'll be making. So here we'll set request.body.avatar equal to the path that we're going to create in our static folder. So 
in addition to having this images folder, we're going to have an uploads folder in static. So we'll say slash static slash uploads slash avatars slash, and then we'll interpolate the name from the authenticated user. And we'll say dash and include the current timestamp with date dot now, and then say dot and add the extension, the value from the extension variable. Now in order to resize, actually re actually resize the avatar and write it to this static folder, we're going to need a package called GIMP. So we'll bring in GIMP. So GIMP is first going to use the read method to read our file buffer, which we'll get from request.file.buffer. This will be asynchronous, so we'll wait this. And we'll set the return value to image. Then we can say await image.resize. We'll make it 250 by 250 in pixels. The first parameter will be 250. And then the second will be jump.auto. And that will make sure our image isn't stretched out. Then we'll write it to our static folder by saying image.write. And we'll need to include a relative path here. So we'll say starting in the root directory, we want to put it in the static folder and in this entire path. And so we want to get that from request.body.avatar. And we can call next. Then to update the user itself, we'll make this an async function. Here we'll change the updated at value. And we'll take the date constructor and get the date as two ISO string. We'll get the current date as a string instead of a timestamp. Then we'll update our user with user.find1 and update. We'll find our user by their ID. We set to request.user.id. We're going to use the set operator here to put the entire request body on it. So any of the data that we're sending over in the request body will be put onto our user. We want to get the updated value of our user, so we'll set new to true. And in order to ensure that we're not putting any invalid data on our user, we're going to set a property called run validators. I'm going to set that to true. So this will rerun our validation meaning that for our user model, where we have these required statements, if these aren't satisfied, if, for example, we don't provide an avatar somehow, or if we don't provide a name or an email, we'll get each of these error messages. So we'll get our updated user back from the await call. I'll say res.json updated user. And that should be it. So we'll save everything head back to Postman. So we'll take the endpoint slash API slash users and include the authenticated user's ID. This will be a put request. We'll update the body. And as we mentioned, we want to update name, email, and the avatar. But in order to upload the avatar, we can't just use raw JSON data. We'll need to go to form data and set some keys. So for the name, we'll set that to maybe Joan or email. That'll still be text. Set that as joan at gmail.com. And for our avatar, this will be a file. We'll choose some image file and I'll select the Hacker News logo. So if we did everything correctly, when we hit send, we should see the avatar have a new path, slash static, slash upload, slash avatars, the name of the user, as well as their the current timestamp, and we see the extension at the end of .png, we see that the name was updated as well as the email. And if we head back to our project, we should see in the static folder, this new uploads folder, and in avatars, 
we have this new photo, this new image. If we look at the dimensions, it's 250 by 250, just like we wanted. And in our app, when we create our client, this user's avatar will reference the new image file that we just created. <laughs>